lucky enough to have lots of different mentors over time. Uh, and I do think that it's important, you know, I've always been really lucky to work for people who believed in me. And I think that's really important. Uh, when you're looking at a job, it's easy if you're an entrepreneur because then you're working for yourself and obviously you hopefully believe in yourself. <laughs> but if you're working for someone else, then you should be wondering whether or not they believe in you. Because if they believe in you, they'll invest in you, they'll give you responsibilities, you'll learn and you'll grow. And if you're working for someone who doesn't believe in you, pretty much nothing good will happen. It may feel like good things will happen in the very short term, but nothing will happen. good will happen over the long term. Uh, the mentor I would highlight is a professor at Stanford, Eric Roberts. Uh, and for those of you who will go on to take programming courses, the people who learn to program in C, uh, he wrote pretty much the canonical programming book uh, for both the first and second courses in programming in C that are taught all across the country. Uh, and what happened was Eric has a special, uh, a special system in his classes where he offers three contests where it's beyond, above and beyond the current assignment. You, have to program, you may have to program for 40, 50, 60 hours to get your entry done. But if you win one of the contests, you get an automatic A plus on the final. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, I'm all in. I'm just not going to sleep. I'll get all my other work done, and I'm going to get that A plus on, a fi on the final. And the contest came, and it was the graphics contest, and I made a screensaver. Many of you probably don't even know what a screensaver is. <laughs> I made a screensaver, and like, it was this great idea, and I had four, and I could switch between four different screensavers uh, in the graphics competition, and I didn't win, but I was the runner-up. And actually, I would think that in now in retrospect, the runner-up is a much better thing to be, because if I had won, I wouldn't have had to have studied for the final. But as the runner-up, I had to take the final, so I had to do all that prep, but I got to go to the winner's dinner at Eric's house. So he invited the three winners and the three runners up to his house. And when I was at dinner at his house, he said, you know, you're really good at this. He's like, you should keep going in this. And he's like, and there's a possibility that you could go on to teach and be a section leader. And he's like, and I really, I really think you could go far in this. You've got a really good grasp of the material. And that word of encouragement caused me to go on to be a section leader where I started off teaching eight people at a time and then I became a head TA with a staff of 40 people who were each teaching eight people at a time. And then I went on to be a lecturer both while I was at Stanford. And for my first few years at Google, I kept sneaking back in the mornings and teaching classes uh, at Stanford. And so I end, and ultimately have taught about 3,000 people the program. Um, and Eric was really, that wouldn't really happen without Eric. And Eric is also the person who in part brought me to Google because after my summer in Switzerland, I came back. Eric asked me a little bit um, about what I had done and I told him, and he said, you know, there's these guys, two guys on the fourth floor, they're doing kind of what you're doing. You're looking at where people go on the web, they're looking at the link structure of the web. They started this company, it's a search engine, I can't remember the name. <laughs> I still give Eric a really hard time that he couldn't remember the name. And I said, you know, Eric, I just got back in the country, I'm really busy right now, I don't think I can mess around with the startup. And it turned out it was actually good because if I had gone to them then, they had started the company about two weeks prior and they wouldn't have been ready to hire me for another eight months, and it wasn't until the spring when I got an email from them saying, we heard you're graduating, we heard we should be talking to you. And I said, wait, I think this is that company, that company that Eric <laughs> told me about. There's no question that hard work is really I important. So I, I was gonna say, I mean, yes, there's no question in the Google case that there was some luck involved and we were at the right place and the right time with the right idea. But that said, it was a lot, a lot of hard work. And I think you're hearing that from Brita and you're hearing that, um, you know, from in all, across all of us, that's what, we're, what, what we experience. I mean, when I think about my early days at Google, like, I mean, we did 130 hour weeks. And most people say that's not possible. There's only 168 hours in a week. But if you don't go home and you don't shower and you don't eat at, <laughs> at, down in the cafeteria like you, and you sleep under your desk for like two hours a night, like you can work 130 hour weeks. And like, I've done that. And for my first five years at Google, I pulled an all nighter once a week, which basically means I've spent 250 24 hour days in the office. Right, so I mean, a lot of people think that Google just happened, and yes, it was at the right place in the right time, but it was also just an unbelievable, I mean, like, I get tired just thinking about how I <laughs> <laughs>